The last time I was with you, I spoke about a pretty polarizing issue that we're facing today as a nation. Today, I want to switch gears entirely and share with you something much more personal. I want to introduce you to my cloud of witnesses. Today's passage from Hebrew is a pretty common scripture passage, and most folks focus on the let's run the race with perseverance bit. But let's be very clear, I am not a runner. In fact, if you see me running, you should probably start to run too because something bad is happening. So I can't preach about running with any kind of authenticity. I prefer instead to focus on a tiny nugget of the text, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Now I'm not going to get into the great theological debate, and there is one, over who actually wrote the letter to the Hebrews. While historically it's been attributed to Paul, later scholars would argue that the writing style and theology are not Paul's, and then people say it is Paul's, and it's a scholarly debate. We don't know. What we do know is that it was written to a group of second generation Christians who were in a time of crisis in their church. This letter is about helping them get through their crisis and strengthening their faith practices. I will offer one caution about reading a letter like Hebrews though. It's just that, a letter, written from one person to another or a group of people in a particular time, place, and situation. My New Testament professor, Jerry Sumney, always put it this way. Reading these letters is like reading someone else's mail. It might prove interesting, but it doesn't really apply to you directly. This letter is about, is about good examples of people to follow, Jesus, yes, but also a great cloud of witnesses who demonstrated faith at critical moments in their lives. In this case, the writer has named Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Rahab, Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, the prophets, Owen, and Jesus. This is a roll call of, of the faithful, a list of those who can serve as examples of faithfulness sent to a congregation that needed to hear that their faith was important. Now, while I understand the inclusion of some of these folks, I'm not sure about others, and I'm certainly sure my list looks different. But I don't think that's the point of this letter, just a, ri a random list of people. I think the point is this. We never truly do anything alone. Even if we are standing alone, we are likely standing on the shoulders of those who made the moment possible. Difficult choices and sacrifices were made to bring us to these moments. And even when we feel most alone, we are indeed surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Take this moment for example. Me, here, in this pulpit, I am standing on the shoulders of the early women who served as ministers. The history of women in ordained ministry stretches back to 1852 when the first woman was ordained. The history of women in ministry, however, goes back way farther. The first female minister in the Bible was Miriam, who after the Exodus led the Israelites in praise and celebration and worship. The biblical heritage of women in ministry continued from that moment. First, women in the First Testament ministered on a daily basis. They led worship in domestic shrines, held vital roles in the faith community. Miriam is in my cloud of witnesses. I'm standing on her shoulders. The contribution of women continued during the exile when women took on important roles. One woman, Hulda, who during the reforms of Je Josiah authenticated the document that led to the reforms. She verified the authenticity of the book of the law and the Lord given through Moses. Her work triggered a religious renewal. Hulda was chosen for this job instead of a prophet, so she must have been pretty important. Women were also important in funeral rites, where they recited and probably composed these rites, as evidenced in Chronicles and Jeremiah. Deborah served as a judge of Israel. Women led in festival settings as well, and these were described in Exodus, in Judges, and in Samuel. Huldah and Deborah are in my cloud of witnesses. 
I stand on their shoulders. The ministerial role of women continued in the New Testament. The story of the ministry of the New Testament women began at the tomb. The risen Christ sent women to testify to the good news of the resurrection. On the first Pentecost, the Holy Spirit poured out power upon all people, women and men. And Paul specifically mentions and often praises the ministry of the women of the church. Mary Magdalene, Martha, Mary the mother of Jesus, Tabitha, Yodia, Sancti, Priscilla, Phoebe, Chloe, and Lunia are all in my cloud of witnesses and standing on their shoulders. The first woman to be ordained in a mainline Christian denomination was Antoinette Brown in 1853 in this Congregational Church. My own denomination began ordaining women in 1888 with Clara Hill Babcock. Antoinette and Clara are part of my cloud of witnesses. I'm standing on their shoulders. In 1970, Elizabeth Plotz was the first woman ordained by the Lutheran Church in America. She was the first woman ordained by any American Lutheran denomination. Elizabeth is part of my cloud of witnesses, and by standing in this pulpit today, I'm standing on her shoulders. I do not choose these women as members of my cloud of witnesses, and yet they surround me. History has chosen some of the people in my cloud for me. Family history has also chosen some of the folks in my cloud. My dad's parents, Robert and Esther Yoler, were founding members of the Pember Road Christian Church Disciples of Christ near Cincinnati, Ohio. In 1850, in night, I said that wrong. 1858 would be a bit far back. Let's try again. In 1958, they hosted the very first service of the church in the basement of the home. They were faithful members of the church throughout their lives and raised both their sons in the congregation. My grandfather would often sing the Lord's Prayer and services at the church, and he and my grandmother were both very proud to have been members from the very beginning. This deep heritage of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ is something my dad shares with my mom. It's part of what brought them together. My mom was raised in the Christian Church Disciples of Christ in Carrollton, Kentucky. My grandfather, Eek, was an elder there, and my grandfather, Nancy, was a deacon. She was also a member of the widow's group at the church and a devoted member of her Sunday school class. She loved her church. I remember sitting curled up beside her on a Sunday morning listening to Paul Lipsy preach as my mother played the organ and my dad sang in the choir and my grandfather presided at the table. My mom was dedicated and baptized in that same church. She met my dad in Lexington, Kentucky, where they were both in college. And she and my dad were both members of the Central Christian Church Disciples of Christ, our recent museum here, when they were in college, and there they were part of a music outreach program to youth. They fell in love and got married at the Carrollton Christian Church. They were both members there when they adopted their children, my brother and myself. So my brother and I were both dedicated in that church. I was baptized there. My first wedding was there. Both of my parents are still active in the church now at the Bedford Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, in Bedford, Kentucky. The church where my dad has served as a board chair numerous times, often serves as a worship leader, and sometimes gives the children a sermon. This is the church where my mom plays the piano or organ most Sundays. The church where over 200 people laid hands on me as I was ordained into Christian ministry, the first and only woman to be ordained in my home county. Kemper Road Christian Church, Carrollton Christian Church, Benford Christian Church, and all of their members are part of my cloud of witnesses. My grandparents, Robert, Esther, Eek, and Nancy, are part of my cloud of witnesses. Reverend Paul Livesey is part of my cloud of witnesses. And although my parents are still living and still active in their church, they too are part of my cloud. I stand on all of their shoulders. Now, I know the scripture is not talking about the electronic storage cloud, but bear with me a minute because I think about it in the same way. In this technologically advanced time, we all have something in the cloud. Our music, pictures of loved ones, files, documents, movies, 
Even if you aren't aware of it, you probably have a bit of yourself stored up in the cloud somewhere. Your social security number, your credit card number, your driver's license picture, it's all in the cloud. What if we're doing the same thing with our cloud of witnesses? With each meaningful relationship we cultivate in our lives, we are also cultivating our cloud. We are storing up a piece of that person, that relationship, that love into our great cloud of witnesses. Y'all are becoming part of my cloud. Friends, former pastors, coworkers, I store up a piece of each of them in my cloud. And as you heard me tell the children this morning, when I was in seminary, I made this now very well-loved stall. And it carries the name of each person in each church that has been a part of my journey. It's a physical representation of my cloud of witnesses. I think I'm a little extra introspective about my cloud this week because I've recently lost two people that mean a lot to me. One, Jennifer, was one of my few friends from high school and someone who really took me under her wing when I was a freshman. The other, my cousin Dutch, was a dashingly handsome Tom Selleck kind of guy who had the best laugh and let me stand on his feet to dance at my uncle's wedding. Both losses have hit me hard, but I'm grateful that I can carry pieces of these folks with me in my cloud of witnesses. But this week, I had an extremely unique experience, too. I had the experience of finding someone in my cloud of witnesses in the cloud. My grandmother. I hadn't heard her voice since before she passed away in 2013, but there in the great cloud online, I found her voice as part of the International Dialects of English archive. I heard her talking about cows and chickens and my grandfather, and laughing. I heard her laughter again, all because my cloud has a spot in the cloud. I encourage you this week to take a few minutes to cultivate your cloud, to look deeply at your life and find the shoulders on which you stand. Make a list if you want. Make a stall if you're feeling crafty. Think about whose sacrifices have led to your success. And if that person is still alive, maybe let them know they're a part of your cloud. Cultivate your cloud, and you surely will be blessed. Amen.